big, cool, uh, exciting, momentous news. <sighs> Let's just jump right in. Look at this. How's the lighting? Tell me you can see what that says. That's right, Peter Penn. Peter draws Peter Penn. Wow. Yeah, cause I have an announcement to tell you. Yep, that's right. Today, we're going to be looking at this, the grand opening announcement, uh, um, the most amazing review of an uh, incredible pen. This, the Peter Draws Peter Pen, uh, a partnership I did with Goldspot Pens and Narwhal Pens, as you can see here. Let's go ahead and uh, look at it. Okay, as you can see here, Narwhal, it says on the side, and here on this side it says narwhal peter draws exclusive medium nib you can also get a fine nib of course i did the um custom box art here uh, we're going to look at that footage in a second uh and then we're gonna i don't know i just okay let's open the box All right, there you go. First thing you see, Narwhal user guide and warranty. Shows you how to refill the pen, fill it, etc. in about 4,500 different languages. And uh, you can get a warranty for it, so that's cool. And then there it is, the Peter Pen. To me, it is very, very reminiscent of uh, how ink looks when it, it's like an ink drop swirling in water, which I really enjoy. All right, there you go. This is the fine nib. And each pen will be unique and different because each piece of resin that it's carved out of will be different. So everyone will have their own unique swirl. And um, basically, it's got a built-in piston system here. So uh, you twist this part, right? And the piston goes down. And then you stick the nib here into your ink bottle and twist it again, and it will pull ink up into the body of the pen. And it can hold a lot of ink in there. Also, it posts if you want it to. Although, I'll admit, I don't usually post it when I'm using these because it's already kind of a nice sturdy pen and it's long enough without the, the, the lid on the back, in my opinion. But if you really want to, you can pop it on the back there and I do like that there's this uh, little like mirror dome on the back of it here so I can like look at myself in that if I want to or maybe you could apply you know makeup on the way to work in the car if you really needed to in a pinch. Oh there's so many cool exciting things uh, uh, to say about it. Um, I don't know. So uh, I've I've done a review on a narwhal pen before and it's not that much different. It's a nice pen, it's solid, it does everything I want it to. Here, look, you can see it even comes with a little wrench here in the packaging, which is for disassembling the piston if you need to. You can pull that apart and then you can see there's a little space here for fitting the wrench in. In my experience, it stays pretty clean just through general usage by itself because I've taken it apart just to see what happens. But I mean, for one thing, there's this weird righty, loosey, lefty, tidy thing going on. Look at that, it pops right out. Popping sound. 
it can keep coming apart. This comes apart even more. So you could take all of this apart if you wanted to, but once again, I don't think it's really needed unless this really gets gunked up somehow. I took mine apart and then I was stuck here for like 15 minutes trying to figure out how to get it back together again because you um, have to have this part twisted at just the right, you know, layer level and then you have to like twist this, you know, like twist this back together and it's just, it's not hard, you just have to fiddle around with it for a while to get it just right and remember that it's lefty tidy to screw it back in. But once you figure it out, you've got it figured out, and you're good to go again. I made it look easy just because I spent 20 minutes doing it last night with this other pen. See, so here are two pens. One I have already a little bit of ink in. Um, it might look cooler, actually, to put <laughs> not black ink in one. Here I've got Noodler's black ink in, and I've been testing it out already. And you can see these have both totally uh, different designs on each one. They each come with their own swirl patterns, and I think it looks cool as the as you unscrew the cap, the swirls go inside the swirls. I don't know. I just really like it. All right, let's put some ink in the other pen. And then let's do some drawing. I'm gonna put some more of the Noodler's ink in there just because it's, uh, I don't know, I just like it. It's, uh, I'm confident in this ink, but I encourage you to try experimenting with lots of other inks, especially I think if you use, you know, some other colorful bright inks in here, it would look cool with all the swirl patterns around the inks, but uh, I'm just, I probably have a bit of a, a personal problem where I am uh, addicted to to just using black ink all the time. I have a hard time branching out to other colors, but a lot of other people don't. A lot of times when I fill up a pen the first time, it only seems to fill up halfway. So what I do is I turn it over, then I squish the piston up, kind of get all the air out of there like they do with hypodermic needles. It might bubble a little bit, but that's okay. Yep. And then I go in for another draw of ink. Full plunge, that's the good stuff. And then you have a nice full reservoir. Refilling a fountain pen can often be a messy endeavor, but uh, that's why, you know, you just kind of have to embrace having a little bit of ink on your fingers. Check it out. Go grab one for yourself. Exclusive series, Peter Draws, Peter Pen. They come with custom box art by me. Here's a little preview of me drawing that. Uh, as you can see, I did draw the box art with a Rotring pen, which you're saying, hey, Peter, it's a box art for the Peter Pen. Why didn't you use the Peter Pen? Well. It's, it's the logistics thing, okay? The Peter Pen didn't exist yet. So you'll have to forgive me. But let's, let me find a, a good sketchbook and then we'll begin drawing with the Peter Pen. Both of them actually, the fine and the medium. Today we're gonna to be drawing in the Nebula Note sketchbook, which I've been drawing in a little bit already. I've taken one of these Peter pens, and I probably have already about 10 or 15 quick sketches that I've been doing just while I've been watching TV, and I think I really enjoy using the pen for this kind of thing. Um, but in the future, I've already even recorded another video, which I haven't posted yet, but you'll see it soon, where I'm even using the pen for more careful, intentional, uh, exact uh, drawings. And people who've seen some of my videos know that I, I kind of flip back and forth, or at least I, I feel like I find myself flipping back and forth between doing faster, looser, sketchier, scribblier stuff and more careful, exact stuff where I take a little bit more time to place each line. And it seems like 
this Peter Pan is good at both of these. Does my voice sound like my nose is plugged? Because I suddenly feel like my nose is plugged. Just a second, let me go blow my nose. Okay, I've done what I can. Anyways, let me outline to you the development process of the Peter Pen. And it's pretty straightforward because I, it's not like I designed a whole new pen from the ground up here. I didn't go out into some alien landscape and carve a new and, and a new incredible pen out of, you know, some sacred stone or something. Basically what happened is I got in touch with both people at Goldspot Pens, which is a website that sells pens. So I guess maybe you call it a distributor. And they helped me get in touch with Narwhal Pens. And they make pens. They're a manufacturer, I guess. They're a pen company. They have other pens they sell. And I, I hope that's an accurate way of describing the relationship of these companies to each other and to me. Um, but basically, I I had an extensive amount of emailing and phone calls with these people. And um, and basically, we discussed what I wanted like in a pen. Basically, I wanted, first of all, as far as a fountain pen goes, I want a nib that maybe flexes a little bit, but not too much. I feel like in fountain pens, it's pretty popular to have very flexible nibs, uh, like maybe in really uh, a lot of very expensive fountain pens have very flexible nibs, right? Because I don't know, as people write like fancy cal calligraphic words and stuff, you want it to flex and see all the ink come out in fancy ways. But I personally don't prefer that for drawing with. So I wanted a, a firmer nib and that's what we got uh, because for drawing, I want a more predictive, predictable, consistent line and it feels good to draw with. So I got that firmer nib with the narwhal pen. And then basically they sent me in the mail these big um this this these big packages with like so many different little resin blanks, different samples, and I got to it was a little bit overwhelming at first, but I looked at all of them, different types of basically I got to choose what I wanted the pen to look like, right? And it could have been bright colors or different samples and patterns and you know, it could have looked like you know, your old 70s marble, pretty much, mar I would say marble countertop. And I just like poured over it looking at like, I felt like hundreds of different, different samples of resin and acrylic, right? It could have just been completely clear or pink or purple or uh, different, all sorts of swirls. And this is what I, this is what I um, ended up choosing because first of all, it's like black and white, a lot, like a lot of my drawings, but also I'm inspired by the the swirls. I've always been inspired by the kind of the fluid dynamics of ink swirling in water or smoke swirling in the air or like clouds in the air, that sort of thing. And I think I incorporate that sort of thing in a lot of my drawings as well. So that's why I chose this design for the pen. And then I, uh, I drew a little design for the pen box. And uh, I mean, it's kind of it's a little bit of maybe over the top the way I made like a little Photoshop design, you know, put like Peter Penn on top of my pen design there. I mean, my, the drawing I made for the box art, but, uh, I think it's fun. I think it's cool. So if you want to grab a pen, you can choose between medium and fine nib and they both work pretty good. I've been using them both. I use them both here in this video. Click the link in the description, of course. If uh, that should take you directly to the Gold Spot website where you can buy the Peter Pen by Peter Draws and tag me on Instagram, like hashtag Peter Pen or something. If you if you get one, I'd love to see what and, and and show me your drawing with it too. I'd love to see what you you all start making with it. I do get a cut of the re revenue if you buy one of these, so it's a way to support me. But also, I think it could be a cool collector's item for you. Uh, you know, it's the first. I don't know if it'll be the last Peter Pen. I don't think so. Uh, the, like the first, the last pen I'll ever make, but it's definitely the first widely available on the market. So go ahead and grab it if you're interested in that sort of thing. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know if you have any questions. I feel pretty confident about it, uh, about offering this to people since, like I said, I have a, a, a good working relationship with the people who um, manufacture it and 
and distribute it. Well, it's like the opposite of these websites, you know, that sometimes I try to up, upload my drawings to where I, you know, you can get your drawings printed on t-shirts and stuff. And then people buy my t-shirts and they wash the shirt twice and this, the drawing starts falling off of the t-shirt and I go to the website and try to get some help. Like, hey, people are buying my designs on these t-shirts and the designs fall off right away. And, but then there's no one there to actually help me with the problem. There's just like some FAQ or some auto reply form. And, but this, like there's an actual company with people that I'm talking to. So I feel a lot better about it, about um, putting my name on it. You know what I mean? Anyways, uh, in other news, I've still just been sitting over here moisturizing like like I have been for the past couple of weeks. I had a couple of nice warm days recently. I've been walking in sh a, a short sleeve shirt, which has been, I mean, walking normally makes my mood better, but walking in warm sunshine is twice as good. I forgot what that was like. So that's been great. I've, I've, I was reading three books. I finished two of them. I'm still in the middle of reading Dracula by, what is it, Bram Stoker. In the middle of that, I will say, short book review, real quick book review. Um, Dracula so far, it moves quicker than I expected. I've never read the actual book Dracula before. I've only had, you know, experienced like a million and one different adaptations and revisions and versions of Dracula via, you know, TV, movies, books, video games, etc. And only about... I'm only even just like one eighth of the way through Dracula, he notices and sees him crawling around like some sort of monster on the outside of a castle, and he realizes he's a monster. I feel like it usually takes longer uh, in other versions of the story. Anyways, uh, and then I finished this really long audiobook that was like 37 hours long called History of Western Philosophy. Um, that was by Bertrand Russell. I finished it finally. That I listened to that almost exclusively while walking. And um, I feel like maybe I, it was like a lot of it. I was just, you know, like throwing spaghetti at the wall, seeing what stuck. And then, and then the plan is to just read some other philosophy books and seeing if other stuff sticks on top of that. Sometimes I was listening to it and some of it didn't really make any sense just because it was, there were concepts that I'd never heard of before, you know. Um, but I wasn't, there, I, I, I constantly had this urge to um, rewind and re listen to stuff over and over again, but I knew that if I did that, it would literally take me forever to finish the audiobook. So I just kept on going, kept on listening. Um, I just knew that there were some concepts there I just needed to hear for the first time so that later I could hear them for the second time, right? So it was a pretty good book. And now I'm listening to a similar book that's only seven hours long called A Little History of Western Philosophy, I think. It's a very similar book, but it's by Oh, it's a little history of philosophy by Nigel Warburton, which feels like, even though it's seven hours long, it feels like maybe just a summary of all the same things, which I'm thinking maybe I should have listened to it beforehand. It's all very interesting, though. And then thirdly, another book I finished recently was um, Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which is an incredible book. Please look it up. I would. That's maybe the most important book I've read recently. I would recommend that to anyone and everyone. Um, I don't know. That's a, it's a tough subject to talk about. It's, she was, um, the woman that was sexually assaulted by what was his name? Well, I don't remember his name. This Brock, um, at Stanford a while ago. And he, the guy only got like three months in prison or something like that. It's a really good book, difficult subject, important subject. Um, at parts, you know, it was really difficult to read the book, but I, I'm in like this little book club with some of my friends and I don't think I would have read the book if, um, if it weren't for that little book club and being encouraged to read it through that. But I'm really glad I read the book. Like I said, some of it was very difficult, but, um, by the time I finished the book, I was, I mean, I was like, it was very encouraging, um, eye opening and, um, I'm really glad that Chanel Miller wrote that book. And uh, like I said, yeah, I would encourage anyone to read it. So, you know, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, you know, these are, these are cool. I'm, I'm happy with these pens and how they turned out. I'm looking forward to do some more drawing with them later in future videos. I've already done some more drawing with them that I've recorded and you'll see soon. Okay. So, um, yeah, let me know how y'all are doing. See you in the comments, all right? All right.